Welcome, everybody. Uh, we'll start with the approval of the agenda that is before us today uh, for our 130 Council meeting. So um, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the agenda. Can I make uh, one addition? You can just, ask. Just the recognition, I'm not sure what's going to happen, that it's, uh, it's treaty day today. Okay. Um, and just to recognize that. That's an annual event to recognize we're all treaty people. So. Okay, so we do recognize that today is treaty day. Uh, and other than that, I will uh, make a motion to accept the agenda. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, it's been moved by Councilor Bosley in addition to recognize uh, uh, treaty, treaty day. day. Uh, and we are all treaty people. So with the with Jim tradition, yes. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Contrary <coughs> minded? The motion is carried to approve the agenda, so we'll move forward. Uh, we have three sets of minutes uh, to approve, so we'll start with uh, the regular council meeting, uh, September 3rd, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes to circulate. It's been moved by Councilor Pranton. Seconded by Deputy Warden Poirier that we approve the minutes of the regular council meeting of September 3rd. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Now we have before us also the uh, Committee of the Whole meeting of September 17th, 2020. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? I'll make a motion, Warden. Moved by Councilor Dowling, seconded by. Councilor McLennan, that we approve the minutes of Committee of the Whole on, uh, of September 17th, 2020. Excuse me, Warren. Yes. May I ask, uh, will, be, will we be able to talk about uh, business arising from this meeting? Yes. Okay, from you. all of those meetings. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it's been moved by Councilor Dowling, second by Councilor McLennan that we approve the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting September 17th. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion is carried. Um, also, we had a special meeting of Council on September 25th, 2020. Do we have a motion for approval? To I move that we adopt the uh, special meeting of Council on September 25th. Okay, it's been moved by Deputy Warden Poirier, seconded by Okay. Councilor Mustard, uh, that we also approve the minutes of the special meeting of Council uh, on September 25th. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? Motion carried. Uh, we also have number four, business arising from any of these sets of minutes. So Council is welcome to bring up anything that is uh, considered to be business arising from minutes yeah just to the following up with the with the potential meeting with the MLA Alan McMaster um, I did have a conversation with him outside we were meeting with uh, a couple of representatives from health looking at the internship program um, at the Inverness Hospital so we're one of ten sites in the province that gets two interns every year in perpetuity for two years and they're doing amazing stuff like setting up clinics there or because see someone in emergency who doesn't have a family doc they advise them to become part of their cohort so that they're giving everyone a frontline um, frontline doctor who's under the um, supervision of a permanent doctor there so good things happening there but i did um address alan not having enough information that i thought would have been the point of record to make a comment to the public about a housing development in Inverness, um, and he didn't sound like he was making his way here. So I do think it's important that we impress on him the idea of working together is fundamental to our county. And looking at the municipality and just uh, from a distance and saying we're not doing the work isn't an effective way to work together. So just to circle back around to our staff, impress on him the importance of working together to have information to share information and to help us get our priorities set. Um, it's just one of the messages I'd like to send. Because I think when we look at uh, our NP, uh, 
Mr. Kellaway has met individually, I know with myself and yeah. with yeah. others, and met with council. And I think that's the type of, we need cooperation right now. In understand. light of the, the pandemic and in light of how we're going to negotiate the next little while. So I just would like to impress on um, the, the, the press, number one, else, that this is a time to make that same thing, commitment like TIR to meet with us quarterly or whatever that time frame is and to learn from each other what we can do um, together better. And that is looking forward. Right now, there should, I mean, there, it would have been nice if you could have been here today for our council meeting to. to you know, to have a two-way conversation with uh, our representative with the province. So um, I, I would like to make sure that uh, this continues uh, while some of us may not still be here. So um, we want to make sure that uh, there is a, um, a plan um, developed where we can have our, our MP on a regular basis and have our MLA on a regular basis to, yep. to make sure that uh, they're aware of what we're doing, how we're doing it, and, and what our our future plans are. So, yeah. Councillor Mr. Gordon, I agree with you 100 percent. And I, uh, first and foremost, I would like to check or see if there's any, uh, like the CAO or the administration here has received any notes or plan for the uh, Alan Pastor to come in and introduce himself <coughs> and talk to us about the, the facilities and the, 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 the problem that we had, you know, as far as uh, wastewater and water. So, uh, Mr. CAO, do you have any information for us? Sure, as requested by Council the day after our previous community hall meeting, I, I did call and left messages with the uh, various numbers for the MLA as well as the follow-up email and uh, so I, I called the uh, uh, called the MLA's and uh, MLA's contact information a number of times and I, I reset my email uh, or I sent an updated email yesterday just to see what uh, the opportunity would be and they get back to me this morning um, with an email, I'm not going to go through it all, but I'll just uh, uh, itemize two parts. So the, uh, he does thank us for the invitation. Would you please meet with council after the October 17th election? Um, and then also that if the uh, meeting with council after October 17th could be uh, of more of a general nature than uh, just specific to infrastructure with through, uh, water and wastewater infrastructure throughout the municipality. So I just received that uh, this morning at 9.19. Okay. 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 Councillor Crenton? Um, having heard the response, I would say <coughs> it can be in general in nature, but one of the items we need to discuss is the wastewater um, and other infrastructure issue, along with our general discussion, I think. Um, and to just take that off the table, I, I don't see any reason why we need to do that. And like Councillor Mustard said, we need to be working together. And there is issues, that's where the issues seem to have come up lately. And that's something we shouldn't be talking about until we are working together on it. So uh, I would invite him. Um, I can understand him wanting to meet after the election because there could be changes. He'll be meeting with the newly elected council. Um, and but that should have we should ask for that to happen fairly soon, and and make up an agenda of some of the things we'd like to talk about, including that. And if he wants to reject it, then we'd like to meet again after that to discuss that. So, one if you want one meeting or two, we'll give him as much time as he needs. I think it's important. And uh, now in the future, I think it, it should be a periodical period or a, a, a semi-annual or quarterly <coughs> meeting like we do with transportation. Um, and we could even maybe do it in, with our MP as well, so the both of them meet with us, and we can all share certain whatever works the best for everybody involved. Mm -hmm. so. Sounds good. Warren, I, I, you know, I personally totally disagree. You shouldn't be here to talk when you put it into backup when you said it in your ass. 
if he's not emily enough, he's walking away from his responsibilities since day one. What I don't like about this is I have, we are living in a democracy here. And sometimes I'm very vocal. But sometimes there is a reason to be vocal. And I'm going to explain you why. I can't understand why, I, I don't want to put any pressure on you, Rankin or Duran, but what I said, and I'm going to read it again so that Paula can put it there, there was nothing put in Duran except by Bill Scalabot that we put Alan to, to, to the mat. Uh, I have a problem being from the north. I don't hear, we don't hear too much from the south. It's all centralized about Inverness, which I have a lot of respect for. I worked in Inverness. I had the dollar store. I was treated like a king. I had the recycling depot. I was treated like a king. But the point is, at this time, what is happening here is all, everything is all put in, and it seems that our information is not going out far enough. Personally, what I would like to do is to have a meeting with this council or another council next time, hopefully it will be all of us, and then we would have a meeting with Paula, CHNU, the Iran, uh, the Hawk, uh, the reporter, anybody, social, any media, mm -hmm. to talk about what we took over and the bills that we have. The people of Inverness County don't know the situation we were three or four years ago when we sat at the table and we had the operational review and we hold a hundred and five million dollars in order to have our wastewater and everything up to par. So my, I'm not uh, frustrated, but I feel that I, I, one way or the other, personally, maybe not as a council, but as deputy warden, and Councillor for Pleasant Bay, Meadco, and Shellycam, I will come across with the truth. How are we? And uh, again, it seems, Bill, again in Iran yesterday, the taxes. It happens that Inverness has higher taxes now, but they don't. The people that have higher taxes is John Downing's riding, over $3 million. So, you know, don't, you don't, the, the media seems to be working around Inverness, which I respect, which I love, which bring business to everybody. It's higher taxes. But we need everybody, every district to be on equal footing. And that's my reason today. And I feel that's what I, I feel. And that's what, the way I feel, I say it. And I'm not frustrated, but I'm just saying that the way democracy should be run, and it should, it's not being run at this point in time in Inverness County. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Warden. Um, and, uh, you know, perhaps those are some of the things that we should also relay to um, our MLA, just to, to make sure that he's knowledgeable about how Inverness County is, is playing catch up with infrastructure. So. Um, anyway, uh, I know that the staff is working diligently to make that happen, um, but everybody has to be aware that it is a struggle, and it takes it takes time to uh, upgrade all of our systems. So it's probably going to take us another nine years at least. So, um, Councillor Dallin. Well, the only thing I have a, a, an issue is is for um, you know what's going to happen in the next two weeks. I mean, you know, like as Alfred said, hopefully we'll all be back, but if not, we're not all going to be back here. What's happening now in Inverness is happening now, so why is the MLA waiting for a month's time or two months down the road to see what's actually 
going on. The issue's been brought up already. Uh, it's not new. Why the wait? No, Councilor, we would have Councilor, to question Councilor, that. Councilor Mustard is probably more than 100% familiar with what's going on, as well as with staff, of course. Let's deal with it now. Why wait? Why wait further, I should say. So what do we do? Insist that he comes to a meeting? We've already, we've already asked. We've asked, yeah. And we got a response. I, I would personally send him a registered letter, you know, being put in, in the Iran and all the social media, that he has to show up with the, the counselors that have been dealing with the problems that we had the last three or four years. Because if we get new counselors, they didn't want to know anything about it. Not that they're not smart, but they didn't live the last three or four years with the problem that we had. And uh, let's say you, you're not, well, you're elected already, but let's say you're not elected. You're not elected. You're not elected. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying this. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then you all end up, you know, I'll have to talk again. You know, which is pretty natural, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, I think we should be able to have him in the next two, three days in here by the, uh, the latest next Wednesday, have him here with us. And if you want the media with it, go for it. And then we'll, we'll explain what's happening. And I still think, personally, that the people of Inverness County should know what you took as warden the first four, the last four years, and all we took, and what we did with our new CAO, and all our good team that are working, and we're very happy with it, and we don't hear nothing about that. We don't hear nothing about us. You know, and that is the major problem that we have. Because I hate to say this, but sometimes self-praise is no praise. But we're doing a hell of a job. Or, or we did a hell of a job. Every each of you one of us. Well, with what we were confronted with, for sure, we did. Yeah. We yeah. did a great job. I, I do support at the next committee of the whole, even though it's right before the election, that he show up. Um, one of the comments made to me, and once again, it wasn't in a meeting, but just in, informally, was, you better get on Central Ave. I said, well, we've been meeting. And I'm, so that level of not knowing how many meetings are going on now with TIR and the whole team and the municipality to make sure the infrastructure's in place before the pavement goes down, it's been going on for months. And that he doesn't know about that. And that he should be sitting in on that because it represents provincial or Nova Scotia power infrastructure is to me a sign that we're not on the same page. We're not participating. We're looking down on the municipality or that we're not really doing our job when, darn it, we're trying to do our job and plan forward. It's the same as the roundabout in, in Wicongam. And all the work that's gone around that, John, in the sidewalks and stuff, that's a, a lot of infrastructure that's not ours. It, it is ours, right? And so part of the accusation is that we don't have to get involved in TIR's work. We are partners in all infrastructure has to. going on. And so I think it is important that we emphasize coming and meeting with the existing council will allow us to sort of uh, bring him up to speed on some of the work that has been done right now that he may not be aware of. And how can he move forward with the new council in supporting the priorities of this council when we have to come up with a large provincial contribution to the deficit we're running in infrastructure. So. I would so, respond by email and letter if that's the case to make sure that um, the MLA does know that we'd like to see him before this okay, council so results. The, uh, what I'm hearing is that we uh, are going to write a letter, whether it be registered mail or not, I don't know if that's a possibility, um, and we are insisting that he meet with us to, so that we can update him From on the all the work that's being done mm -hmm. and the position we are in. So. Yes, Councilor. I'd like to concur with uh, what our Deputy Warden has said about, uh, about demanding the meeting before the election. And I think using his point that everybody around the table right now are the people who have dealt with this and to meet after the election, it could be the same people, but there's chances that could change. So we want to meet so everybody has a chance to bring him up to speed in the work to be done by council. That's definitely a... a, a so that, that statement should be part of that letter, definitely. whatever else goes in it. But I think that tells them why we're asking yeah. in a very clear way prior to... Yeah. Yeah.
Like, well, are we going to pick a date or a certain day or we whatever? Have the, we have to. We have the date picked. I'm just saying if it's the, it's the COW, the next COW meeting was going to be on the 15th. Or? So that's the day we're going to meet with them? Or well, if we do, we can ask them. I mean, on yeah. the 15th, we're here anyways for the COW. Yeah. We didn't... That day or another day of his choice that we may be available. But that's that right. would be our first choice because we are going to be here, I believe. Mm -hmm. some, yeah. some of us are here on Wednesday as well. On the well. 14th. 14th yeah. as well for police advisory. Police so. advisory, yeah. Yeah, so we have yeah. I'm just going to see if I think I'm available. Well, we'll give him options then, will we? Yeah. Um, October 15th, or another date that he may be available, but we have to insist that he does attend. Because yeah, another date. If you can't make it on the 17th, he might have something on the go. Whether he does or not, we should make it another date. I or can't be here. His, I guess maybe. You can't, you can't be here. Pardon? Um, can't to be to here to I can totally. I've got three different meetings in there that came up just this week, and I quit, can't get them. One is with my commitment in Halifax. The Zoom call that I have to chair. So, um, and uh, then there's a meeting on cell service in the community, which is a high priority. <laughs> I, I, I better not. I better show up at that one. So, um, that's just my schedule that day. I don't know if we can move it, but if not, I don't. I don't have to be here either. I, suppose. I don't know if it's going to be possible for all of us to be here, including Alan McMaster. But we have to work towards Maybe that. Maybe if we Maybe had an alternate, what about having the 14th as an alternate? If that does work, that's the day before. I don't know if other people are. Well, it's like Mark and Corey and I are both here for. Police advisory. Yeah. What time of day is oh, that? 10 30. So if we did something before lunch? Yeah, that works for me. Just so give some options. 14th or 15th? Yep, yeah. 14th or 15th. 14th looks like the best. Definitely a day I can attend where I can't the 15th, if that makes any difference. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll lean towards that if we can, yeah. uh, to make sure we're all here. But if he can only come on the 15th, you know, mm -hmm. if you get the meeting, go ahead. I'm mm -hmm. fine with that. I'm fine with everybody else um, being involved. So. so all of the things that we've discussed will be put into an email, um, a letter, um, to our MLA inviting him and more or less insisting that he come so that we can update him on information that's incorrectly reported on in the media at the present time. Okay. I don't think that we are a delay we are delaying a housing project. No. Are we? No. And all the work we've done around the housing strategy, which just seems to be not picked up, I know it's a complex issue and it's just like, oh you know what you know, approving a housing project. It's much more complex than that. The details are missing throughout the reporting, and I'm just saying, and certainly with Alan's, um, you know, in attendance, we can talk about that. How can we get support from, now it's in municipal affairs at the province level, housing, let's work as a team. That's my message. It doesn't matter who's in these positions. As representatives of the people, we need to be working as a team in this small county and not be looking down upon someone or they're not doing their job and not paying uh, close attention to what's really going on. So. Okay, so we're good with that, yeah. Deputy Warden? Yep. Yeah. Another question uh, regarding the road, uh, like the road, the crosswalk. What's a letter to be sent out to uh, that's on council? Uh, I believe September that's in the our... Third, was there a letter sent out to uh, we didn't didn't do the letter, but I, because I did speak to the area manager, so um, I don't think we, we can still send the letter, but uh, it's certainly we'll have a plan uh, for your update by next week. It's moving ahead. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else from business arising, folks? No, it's fine. I'm good. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is the Milford Road in Wicago. So Milford Road is a, a road in the community of Wicago, and it was uh, advanced by Councillor McLennan for base class road paving, and that was approved by the province of Nova Scotia. And then subsequently approved by uh, council. 
And um, <coughs> this road in particular, even though most of the people um, that live on that road have always classified it as Milford Road, and they thought it was always one one road collectively, that whole area. So uh, the map I just sent you out is the destination that TIR uses for that road. So it's actually broken down into three components. Uh, there's a J-class road component, which is 0.49 kilometers. Then an I-class road of 0.1 or 10.10 kilometers. And then there's a K-class section, which is 0.31 kilometers. And along this road, um, according to TIR's database, it, does, it then switches to a Monroe Road. Um, but all the residents and their addresses are still uh, Milford Road. So it just shows how road classification can be very difficult. You've been driving on this particular road all your life, and you would think it's just one completely fully registered road of of all the same, but it is broken. It's basically three roads um, that's called Milford Road. So uh, uh, we just wanted to make sure this was on the agenda. Uh, residents have been calling the councillor as well as the Department of Transportation and, and some emails I received and calls as well from residents just uh, wondering what the situation is because they saw the painting markers up to the J-Class road section and then none afterwards and they were a bit confused by that. So uh, just as an update with those follow-ups with TIR, they are looking at uh, what options there may be to extend uh, paving further up after the J-Class road. Uh, I'm not sure how those discussions internally with the department have progressed, but it is something they are they are discussing. But in terms of this road, the J-Class portion paving uh, component is and will be very, very shortly underway. Questions? So, okay, go ahead, sir. Um, was there not an issue with snow removal on this in the winter too? No, so they yeah. are going to continue with snow Oh, yeah, no, they always paved it. Or okay. they, they plowed it, I should okay. say. I and remember a road recently where there's there a was place where the school bus turns up above, where it's, uh, I guess, right around where that K class arrow okay. is. There's so, snow removal is not a problem, it's the pain. No, no, no. It's a but fully registered public road, it's just that it's, uh, the road is chopped up into various classifications. And they only want to pave to where? The with that class yellow. Yellow. With the yellow. The yellow. The line ends, is it? Yeah, I believe so. That's that's about fifty percent of it. Mm -hmm. So the K, it, okay. K class is unmaintained. Pardon? It says on the outside of the diagram here, the mapping, K a K road is unmaintained. So I wonder how many kilometers of that point is unmaintained. One. Point three one. Point three one. Point three one. Yeah. Yeah. I know Councilor McClellan had a question, but it's, thank you, Pete, for getting these classifications after three years of trying no, no. for what a, yeah, that's for what a road was. <laughs> there you go, because we never knew what a the classifications were most of the time. My apologies, Council. But, uh, but they're all listed, but they're in different categories. Yeah, but they never ever explained to us before what uh, some of the classification was. Yeah. But. Uh, Alan Baster was talking to transportation over that last bit of road, the I class to the K class, and the transportation are willing to pay half if the municipality will pay half. That's the, but anyway, down across from, right at the Trans Canada at the bottom of the page, there's about what, 300 feet of road there. It's not shown on the map. And people are wondering why that's going to be paved. Can we take the paving out of there and put it up on the... Is the other one down here, is that J-Class or... Yeah, no, no on that's on the side. J-Class or high? Wait. Across the highway? Yeah. Milford Road still extends and it's still considered J-Class on that, that very small portion on mm -hmm. the opposite side of the Trans-Canada. 
Oh, but see, the pain crosses, there is. He crosses the, the trans He crosses the trans Yes. Yeah. yeah. But see, the paving there is nothing wrong with it. That's what the people are saying to me, and I looked at it myself, and they were wondering if we could take that paving and put it up with the... Was that paving part of the original project? Yes. Apparently, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that would give you a little sense more. to me. Yeah. They put a price tag on doing that? Oh, I don't know. That's people the first thing we'd have to look at. Well, no, you, you don't, all, all John's asked for is the extended. Yeah. Yeah, this, keep going. This way, so but they're looking to the split yeah, that down there, yeah. But TIR are willing to pay half from this yellow line right up to the end. That's the word I got. If, we pay got half, if the municipality room. pays half. Yeah. And maybe we can take the bottom lane, that three or four hundred feet. Don't use that. Because the paving there, that road is very rarely used. That's the thing. And it, the paving's good on it. So you're suggesting a swap? Swap, yeah, right on. But no, that. But even there earlier, transportation put a culvert in up on the I class part of it. Oh, really? Oh, God, yes. Well, I mean, that doesn't mean there's paving coming, but uh -huh. there's a bad culvert here, so that's, the sometimes it does, yeah. So, anyway, I was wondering what council think of it. So, we, we have had no correspondence from TIR in terms of them paving that other section or a request for any funds from the municipality so i'm not i'm not uh, so yeah. i've had no indication that they're willing to, to do that paving on, on the record at, or the uh so maybe, policy, right? so maybe when alan comes to meet with us we can have a conversation <laughs> well i mean that's just the, the exact <laughs> fact we're trying to make here if we were all meeting together, we could be following up on that and have the lines of communication so that that could be easily coordinated between the number of people talking to TIR. So at the least, what needs to come to us is a, a request letter yep. with the price tag yep. that we'd be responsible for. Yep. And once we have that, then we can make an informed decision. And I would say we either ask for that or see if it comes forward and uh, or ask Alan. Um, and I think that we need to really open the door with TIR first and see if they're willing to do that swap. Yeah, and what it's going to cost. Swap at no cost. The half and half was probably next year's budget for me. I'm just saying, for us to keep <coughs> extending our budget, which we know we've already covered a couple of over. We've extended. Over well, I'm just saying, this has been a big year for us. I'm not saying we don't do a 50-50 on it, but let's... Uh, Let's see if they can do the swap, get that in place while they're, before they put the pavement down this fall. Yeah, so we'll have to investigate it before we make a final decision on it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. it can happen, especially since we're having another meeting. Or two. Okay. So we'll leave that one uh, for now until we get official word from Department of Transportation. Okay. Or ask for official word from yeah. the Department. And offer to swap if... <coughs> okay. Well, I don't we, know. Oh, sorry. Well, we swapped in Inverness, so I can't see. We did. Yeah. 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 We just have to do it. I don't know. We just have to do it through them. They have yeah. To, okay. They have to be in agreement as well. Okay. Should we be sending a letter asking what's going on with this, or just wait for them to respond? There's two ways of looking at that. Right? I'll get them to respond. Okay. Okay. <coughs> well, maybe uh, maybe Keith should uh, touch with them as well. Um, to uh, make sure that uh, well, they would the kilometers and everything are yeah, if John, If John talks, then they would respond to the office. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the, the swaps that did occur, streets replacing other streets through to the J-Class road, road program, were J-Class roads being swapped for J-Class roads. So yeah. uh, we have an... The, it, these two roads here, or this part of the Milford Road, parts of which is called uh, Monroe Road, that's I class and K class. So um, I'm sure TIR will be following up with us soon with any updates on what what they're able to uh, to move forward with. Okay, very good. Okay, sounds good. The leftover pavement sent over to Marguerite. <laughs> Just dump it in the heat. <laughs> oh. <coughs> so uh, we're going to uh, 
communicate. You're going to communicate with with uh, the province, and Keith is going to communicate with the province regarding a squad. Okay. Great, all good. Yeah. Okay, item number number six. Uh, we have an update on heavy garbage pickup, and Keith's back on again. I think the garbage is out already. Yeah. Heavy garbage. The <laughs> schedule. I'm just going to hand those out to uh, council just for your review. So heavy garbage is moving forward on a contract basis with the municipality. It'll be starting uh, as outlined in the schedule. Uh, we're not. We're, we're having a difficult time anticipating the amount of volume due to uh, our the issues with COVID-19 and not allowing um, us to be able to do a summer pickup or spring pickup. We do know from the volume uh, material that did come into our transfer station and our uh, construction and demolition site in Kenlock that there was a significant amount of material that has come in over the last number of months. Uh, that could signal that it may be a little bit lighter uh, but it may not. We may have a very heavy, heavy garbage collection uh, this October. Uh, right now we have a budget of $45,000 for that. Um, depending on the volume, it, that may have to be increased. We will monitor that on a weekly basis <coughs> so we can keep council up to date. Uh, but certainly um, we could be anticipating a lot of material for, for this uh, fall. Usually. The fall pickup is uh, much lighter in terms of volume, um, and it's a service in this valley has been providing the residents. Uh, but with, again, as I mentioned, summer uh, not being able to be put in place, this could be even above and beyond what our summer volume traditionally is for our heavy garbage pickup. So, moving forward, we're we're just going to we're anticipating that it, it is going to be of high volume. Uh, so we may have to come back to council with an adjusted budget um, as, uh, as we monitor the progress. But certainly you have a, the schedule here. Uh, the first week will be Central Inverness, which includes, uh, it's all broken up there, uh, Monday, Inverness, Tuesday, Fort Hood and area, Wednesday, Inverness, Pennsylvania, Thursday, Pagama, and Friday, Mabu area. The week of October 2nd, we'll be focusing on Southern Inverness, and then week of the 19th, Northern Inverness. October 12th. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Yes. Week of October 12th, South Inverness, October 19th, North Inverness. Also in your package and in communications, material that is, uh, that's going to be picked up and material that is not for heavy garbage, I know some, no matter how much communications, there are times confusion around that, and uh, I suspect that... Like the wet mattress thing. Yes, I expect you'll be all getting some calls uh, over these these weeks, and please forward the, any of those issues that may come up to myself and the appropriate staff, and we'll get those dealt with uh, appropriately. So, um, some people miss the timing. Sometimes uh, there's material picked up. Uh, that's put in place that may not even have been for pickup, so uh, we'll troubleshoot any of those issues as uh, the week garbage week progresses, or weeks progress. Councilor Dowling? Keith, are we, are we doing our own heavy garbage pickup, our own, your own staff, or are we subletting or subcontract? Yeah, it's a subcontract, just to again make sure we're uh, due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a limited amount of staff that are currently working uh, almost on a daily basis with water, sewer, and uh, cross-cut issues and other issues throughout the municipality. So it's another layer of protection to make sure our, our team is is uh, has as less exposure as possible. Um, so we'll see how this this goes, and uh, and we'll, we we are proceeding with a contract basis this time around. The only, if I can, can go ahead. The only question I have, just as I, I have been getting some, <coughs> some feedback already from Port Oxford, um, where they seem to, when this went out on Facebook on Monday or Tuesday, um, some 
uh, giving some of the feedback. Brendan's been getting calls, of course, that they want to have one too. Know that they think some of this is actually part of them. Mm -hmm. So I, hopefully our contracts are going to be very specific, especially it's only going to affect my district as to where my district touches the town of Fredock Street limits so that our contractors, if we're getting, if you're paying them by bulk, which I assume it is by tonnage, um, that they're only touching the municipality of Lewis County residents. They have to be aware of where, yeah, where, where the lines are. Yeah, where the lines are. And, and uh, cause it's, uh, I've seen lots on, on Facebook and they've been writing this quote with me yesterday about it. So when we, when we put out the, our, the request for proposals on this work, we gave uh, potential contractors both options to submit uh, costs based on a, an hourly type of uh, approach and or uh, with weight. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. Is this on the website too? Uh, yes, it's now, on Facebook. It's now been posted, yes. So we yeah. can direct people there. Yes. Okay. Very good. Okay, any other comments or questions on our heavy garbage pickup? Okay, uh, next we're going to have an update on cell service. That's the sides of it, yeah, the quiet, a, the silence. Yeah, that's a <laughs> um, yeah, I dropped the call. The municipality, we've received a uh, um, <laughs> municipality posted request for proposals for cell coverage. Um, Submissions were were provided to the municipality from various uh, potential pro providers and other companies. Uh, so the, those have been reviewed and scored. Uh, we're just working towards uh, some final uh, back and forth with uh, with one of the firms in order to be able to uh, uh, present a finalized uh, potential plan for council at our, our next committee of the whole meeting. Uh, but we're, uh, we're we've been. Uh, diligently making sure we're followed up with uh, with references and such for the various uh, submissions um, and we had to get additional information on some of the submissions as well so we're very close to uh, providing council with a, uh, a full update at our next uh, meeting of homey how many companies submitted uh, we did have we had uh, we had three submissions and you've narrowed it down? Yes. Good. Uh, we did have inquiries, uh, and we thought we, would, we, we were, we were going to receive a fourth, but that, that did not uh, transpire. Okay. Councilor Brandon? Um, and I, I made you aware as well, Keith, that's one of the meetings I had on the 15th is with a committee in Marguerite that's meeting to discuss cell service, where they need to go next, like many communities are doing. And uh, I've invited our CAO to come. If, if, there's, if there's a meeting with an MLA, then that's, I understand that. It's not 100% necessary you're there, but you're more than welcome. And I'll get to the information on that. Um, is there, I know they're going to be asking me or you if you're there for an update from the municipality. Is there other information by then? Well, the committee, the whole meeting may happen the day before. I'm just wondering, I want to be able to give them a good understanding of where we are and what we've been doing, because we have been doing a lot. What day is your meeting? The 15th, the Thursday, the day the Committee of the Whole was scheduled for. Okay. Um, just what, what can I release and what's confidential there, too? I mean, anything here is not confidential, so, but... Uh, well, the Committee of the Whole meeting will be a public update, so... Um, and we can meet with community groups or any other individuals that uh, want some more information on on that uh, on the submission or on the uh, successful uh, submission. Okay. And if you're able to attend, obviously you'd have information we could work with to get around. Yes, if that was yeah. as well. Yeah. For the Marguerite session, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> okay. West Bay, Marble Mountain. Pardon? Just West Bay, Marble Mountain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's not fight over it. <laughs> There's lots of gaps across the municipality. I'll try to get a workshop. There you go. Across, across the municipality from...
coast to coast. He was quiet um, there. I was trying to get him. Right. And does, has anybody noticed that uh, reception is poor the last while? Any, any worse than it already <laughs> is? New, new phones are terrible. It's hard to get poor when you don't have it yeah. at all anyway. So. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> nothing, nothing to compare it with. Huh? But that's the number one question I get out there is what's happening on cell service. Mm -hmm. More than internet, actually. Mm -hmm. um, cell service. Yeah. So I don't you know can, what we can do, but. Uh, so at least if you can get cell service, or you can get internet on your phone if you have it. Yeah. So, yeah. So. yeah. Okay. So um, we're going to have an update on accessibility, and I believe Charlotte is going to do a presentation for us. Welcome, Charlotte. Hi. I'm coming closer so everyone can hear me. I know I'm a low talker. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, last week I attended the um, accessibility, um, developing accessible plan, uh, which was hosted by the accessibility directorate. Um, so basically what they were doing was outlining the responsibilities under the Accessibility Act. Um, there are a couple of updates um, in, in relation to it. Uh, the presentation outlined um, that the municipality would be, uh, uh, how the municipality will identify, remove, and prevent barriers in policy uh, programs, practices, and services, and, uh, and achievement dates. So it's a very specific plan um, they're looking for. Um, this, this, the Accessibility Act will, um, the prescribed sec, uh, public sector bodies include the municipality, education, uh, universities, and schools. Um, so um, our responsibility would be to uh, create or to re-engage, because I believe we have an advisory, an accessibility advisory committee that is in existence within the county. Um, so we would have to either re-engage or um, look at developing another another advisory committee uh, for the plan. The advisory committee would basically uh, be a guiding force for the document um, who would have basically input on the final draft um, as well as their expectation is that we would do complete public engagement. Um, for those that are affected by um, accessibility issues within the community so that we have everything identified. Um, in addition to that, uh, the, the deadline originally for the plan um, was a year from the date uh, the Act basically commissioned uh, the creation of the plan, uh, which would have been April 2021, but that, due to COVID, like everything else, has been pushed back. Um, they haven't announced the official date uh, for that. Um, they are going to make that sometime this fall. So that was the information. They have provided us with a toolkit, um, which basically outlines all the requirements for the plan. It, um, in, uh, in, from staff lead um, to engaging with the ad advisory council, um, proper engagement uh, tools and, and techniques. Um, so um, basically they are um, uh, asking us for a collaborative approach, but they are letting uh, basically folks know and they want us to promote this within the community um, that um, they want a collaborative approach, but they are under the act. Uh, they are able to find non-compliant organizations up to $25,000. Yeah, so um, basically um, they will work with us. They have uh, provided us with a regional uh, support person from, from their staff. So they, have, they identified that within the presentation. That's who provided us with the uh, toolkits. So um, basically uh, we have a year <laughs> or a little better um, to, to get this uh, reignited re, uh, and uh, put some focus to it. That's it for the update. Well, thank you very much, Charlotte. Uh, any Good. questions or comments, Councillor Dell or Councillor Franklin? Um, thank you, Charlotte, for that, and I'm glad you were able to attend that meeting. Um, I chair the uh, Accessibility uh, Advisory Committee for uh, development of of uh, the 
policies and um, the laws and um, all the government stuff that's going forward. We just submitted our first set of recommendations to the minister and they are being reviewed and our step two is taking those recommendations and we're do we divide it into subcommittees and we're looking at <coughs> those recommendations in a much broader detailed way and that's where we are right now um, the committee that's established here in Inverness County um, both Jim and I have sat on that I think it's a good committee um, we haven't been that active lately um, obviously for a number of reasons including COVID um, but the committee is still intact and I had an email from Callum McClory wanting to get reorganized again just recently um, so I think that's a good idea we need to talk about that's a separate entity now because the committee went and registered as a as a society under the Societies Act so at, in order to be able to do some fundraising um, which is a good thing for us the committee goes but it kind of puts it at a little distance from council um, and the municipality because um, we're not allowed to, to raise funds like that um, so one of the things they did say in regards to the committee would be the formation of a new committee it could be a shared committee so if we want that's to just share, what i was thinking they share it with uh, our our uh, yeah. neighboring municipalities yeah. were able to do that. We can do that, and we also, with the committee we have, we can work with that committee, but it may be, we can work with the same people, we just have to define it for the purpose of the municipality, but it's still its own entity out there. You know, there should be a way we can work around that, and that's something we should discuss when we first meet. The other thing um, I have available, should have available, he said he was going to send it to me last week, I didn't get it, but um the town of port hawkesbury has pretty well completed their plan which would be very similar to what we would need and they have no problem with and i have no problem with us plagiarizing as long as the other plagiarizing <laughs> yeah as long as, plagiarizing. The, yeah as long as the other group is okay using their <laughs> share the resource that's a better way of putting it but um using their information to help us and, and if they have near a final product we can look at it and say here's kind of without it gives us a really good That's idea of what the scope is and uh, so I would suggest we get that and I I was promised that I just haven't and I'm, the gentleman that promised I'm sure he just didn't get to it yet but uh, so we have that available and then I originally thought we'd work with Victoria County the town of Port Hawkesbury and the municip our municipality Port Hawkesbury kind of got off ahead of us which is good and uh, they'll work with us well to help. So I think the first thing that should happen <coughs> is between you and I, we can organize a meeting with the committee, bring them up to date, and talk a little bit about the, that structure versus the municipality, make sure we're okay there, and we should be ready to move forward. So um, I think, like a plan. yeah, and so. uh, everything else provincially is working real well. It's mm -hmm. starting to make it. Just want to mention as well, if you're, Going by Granite Tang, we funded it actually. The new uh, fishing uh, pier and wharf is, is there um, right just after you go around the sharp turn after the bridge. It's just down mm -hmm. the first right, so you can see that. Um, and uh, Paula here is taping us today. She did a nice story on it. And uh, then there's another one, fishing wharf, that was sponsored as well at Lake Law that uh, has provided accessible fishing on the lake there as well and it's Great. it's well built so there's a couple then you have the beach in Inverness there's a couple of really nice projects that mm -hmm. happen in this county right yes, sir. Uh, and by volunteer groups and when they do that they learn a lot too of that too because they but one of the points they made in Granite Tang and it was a it was a salmon association in both cases that did these projects mm -hmm. they did them um, and had a, I found out after the fact they had to go out searching out a lot of their own information. As far as our committee goes, we want it to be accessible. in print but accessible to people to use. Mm -hmm. And you know, as far as the county goes, maybe we start with this building um, as one of the projects. Just and that can be a learning experience as well, which 
you know, as we develop our plan, this building could be the first first plan at the part of that because I can give you a number of things that could be done a little better here to make it more accessible. So anyway, that's all I have to say. Uh, okay. But uh, I look forward to working with everybody on the future. Thank you, Councillor Cranton. Did you I, I just wanted to add it and because Calum Callum Macquarie, who's, um, who is heading up the Accessibility Committee, is a quadriplegic, is looking into these fishing rods that are totally accessible, that do all the casting for you. So there's a whole bunch of integration going on, and uh, you, know, it, it, you know, just not to underestimate the importance of the advisory group and people maybe putting out the call for the whole county to just get the ideas flowing. They're always doing research on what accessibility are barrier-free, so it's not just mobility issues, it's sensory. So there's just a lot of learning about this that uh, I think once again can uh, put Inverness County on the map and already has, and already has. And it can make a difference in your tourist industry as well. I mean, I've had calls for people wanting to come here fishing just after those two projects were developed that I was able to say, here, they're just brand, they're brand new. Oh, that's great. Have, have added, yeah. right? So it's good. Yep, that's yeah. great. So um, the date that was originally sent, April of? 2021? Ten, yeah, 2021. It will be extended. They just haven't announced a date. They haven't announced a date. Yeah, at this point. Yeah, ten minutes. Right, and that date is set for everybody to have their plans in place? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So maybe you and I and Jim could talk a little bit about picking a time for the first meeting. You? Yeah. yeah. Great. Any further comments or questions of council? No, all good. It's very good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now we're going to uh, go on to our recommendations that came forward at Committee of the Whole. And the first one is St. Joseph Des Moines uh, Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, they're asking uh, for some assistance through uh, a loan guarantee for some work that needs to be done in their uh, on their trucks, I believe it was, right? Do you want me to explain a little bit about that, or is someone here too? Basically, they had a breakdown in one of their trucks. Mm -hmm. Major um, pumps or uh, transfer system, case system went, I'm not sure exactly what it was. It could contaminate by from water from the tanks somehow. And the whole system has to be replaced to the tune of around $30,000. Mm -hmm. Totally unexpected. One of those things that happens that ruin you. Um, and uh, they were looking for some funding as well, but really that they don't qualify under the um, funding uh, development fund. So the least we can do is provide a loan guarantee. Um, this is not the new truck they just bought or the new used truck, it's, but it's one of their major trucks. So that's kind of where they are. They're kind of in a little bit of a panic trying to get this. The company they priced is by the Truro Halifax. They'll come right to the fire hall and do the work. They've got a quote from them. They'd be down and actually inspected everything and told them what they needed. And that was roughly the price tag. So, <coughs> so um, would you like to uh, I'll make a motion that we approve, we approve uh, a loan guarantee for the repairs to the St. Joseph Line truck owned by a, the fire department there. In, in the amount of $29,600. That's what it is, yeah. Okay, then moved by Councilor Cranton, seconded by Deputy Board Corey, that we approve the recommendation made of, at Committee of the Whole, uh, that a loan guarantee be granted to the St. Joseph Des Moines uh, Volunteer Fire Department in the amount of $29,600. All in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Next is the uh, Judic water exploration. And um, there was a recommendation made at Committee of the Whole um, that Council may, uh, may approve. Um, and it reads that Council fund $38,800 plus HST from gas tax funds to deepen um, well number two in Judic in hopes of achieving increased yield. Do you want to make that a motion? Well, Moved by Councilor Dowling. Seconded by Deputy Warden Poirier. That um, that we that Council approve the funding in the amount of thirty-eight thousand eight hundred dollars plus HST.
from gas tax funds to deepen uh, well number two in Judic in hopes of achieving increased yield. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Contrary minded? The motion is carried. Port of Spain, Go ahead. I just want 9 4 with Port of Water. Port Water or Inverness? <coughs> Port of Water and Sewer Services? Yeah, for recommendation. That's the, uh, the, um, the letter we received from some of the residents that would like to have oh. an extension of sewer and water that's on Marble right. Hill. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, I think that's I know what. Get uh, that one is, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Port I, I just water. noticed that Inverness was not on there for the recommendation. Yeah. yeah, maybe you can add that one so that we uh, won't miss. Sorry, I didn't mean your eyes. No, no, I just, That's, yeah. This one I was looking at the motion for Judic, and I was like, I just have to look back at our council minutes. Yeah, and that's what I was looking at. Sorry, I apologize. So we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. We'll finish the others first, and then uh, we'll get that one as well. Because I do recall um, making that recommendation at Committee of the Whole. So uh, the next one is the Shetty Camp Water Treatment Plant Roof. So um, it was recommended by Committee of the Whole that uh, Council fund an additional $10,218.94 for the roof replacement at the Shetty Camp Water Treatment Plant. A motion? I move that uh, we accept uh, the water treatment and roof money for the amount of ten thousand two eighteen and ninety four cents. Excellent. Yes. Okay. Second that. Second that. Moved by uh, Deputy Warden Poirier and second by uh, any any discussion. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Are we moving along too fast here? No. Seconded by Councillor Pranton uh, that we um, that Council direct municipal. Oh, sorry. That Council fund an additional $10,218.94 to the roof replacement at the Shady Camp Water Treatment Plant. All in favor of that motion? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? And the motion is carried. Um, the recommendation uh, from Council regarding the Port Hood Water and Sewer Services uh, request for extension is, the, is that um, Council direct municipal staff to do an assessment of the Port Hood water and sewer services and determine the current capacity and the availability for expansion. We have a motion? I'll make a motion. Moved by, Deputy, uh, moved by uh, Councillor Dowling and second by Deputy Warden Poirier uh, that we uh, direct municipal staff to do an assessment of the Port Hood water and sewer services and determine uh, the current capacity and the availability for expansion. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion carried. Uh, the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Renewal Cost Overrun. Um, uh, the committee, uh, the recommendation that came forward from the Committee of the Whole was that Council accept the cost overrun of 15.5% for the Birch Street repaving project. I move that we accept the overrun of 15.2% on okay. the paving project as the cost cost for with the provincial government. Okay, uh, it's been moved by Deputy Warden Poirier, seconded by Councillor Dowling, that Council accept the cost overrun of 15.5% for the Birch Street repaving project. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded? carried. And uh, not necessarily last because I think we are going to be doing another one after this one, but um, we'll do this one first. Um, so at Committee of the Whole, it was recommended that Council advance a request from the Lake Ainsley Development Association for several community signs to be erected and be in both English and Gaelic throughout District 2 three and four to the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Renewal. We have a motion. Moved by Councillor McLennan. Seconded by second. Councillor Dowling. <coughs> that Council advance the request from the 
Lake Ainsley Development Association for several community signs to be erected and be in both English and Gaelic throughout District 2, 3, and 4. On to the Department of Transportation and Infrastructure Renewal. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. Motion carried. Okay. Do we have one for Inverness? No, that was to say there was no actual recommendation, it was more discussion <coughs> suggesting the staff to continue to move forward and, and complete the estimates and costing on the Okay, thank you. I just I missed I missed the Port Hood one in the correspondence. I forgot the Port Hood was in the correspondence. Oh so right, so you thought I yeah. Thinking, it's okay, not that yeah I thought we sorry my call here, but oh, oh no, no yeah. worries. Okay. Okay, so uh, we're down to next meeting date. So when that will be, we're not certain. But we do have the committee of the whole, October 15th, when our next council meeting uh, will be. That is to be determined. Most likely sometime in October, in November. So right now there. We're following the regular schedule that was set up by council on like Thursday the 15th would be a committee of the whole meeting commencing at 9 or And I think we agreed to have that meeting. Did we not? Yeah. yeah. yeah more than the only concern I had with Alan, and I know I agreed last time was that we don't find Alan and now I mean, if we have an issue there, should, should this council be really committing on to what? Next council, regardless of who's here or not, is going to be voting on. That's kind of what you know what I mean? Um, well, we wouldn't be voting, we'd be making a recommendation. That's what I mean. Right? So, so if we're recommending an issue, and then they have the to. Council, yeah, okay. That's the only thing that I see. We would almost need to read, if there's new people here, we would have to bring them up to date on what we kept discussed at the committee of the whole. We'll still have two. Yeah. And if we had a number of recommendations, <laughs> yeah, it would almost, yeah. <laughs> almost be duplicating the COW meeting if we had five or six recommendations. We'd have to go through that all again for any new people for here. Mm -hmm. If there are, if there's not, it's no, it's a no-brainer. But if there is, we would have to, before they would be able to make decisions. Well, for Betty Warden and Gordon W. Warden Party, I mean, you two were here four years ago. What did you just do then? Did you remember? Have our last meeting was uh, that organized. Before we start, I'm saying as a group before we start, before you took or, over. Yeah, or was the uh, the, the uh, our, our October what eighth meeting was our last meeting? I think four years ago. Oh, because it split before the election. It was, it, it was a council election. meeting. Yeah, yeah. I think that then we didn't have a COW. We were having meetings on Mondays then. But you wouldn't have had time though after the eighth. There was no the CW election. meetings then, was there? It would, no. We were not. We weren't following the same pattern then. No. No. That's right. No. Yes. We were having meetings on Monday. We were having policy meetings. We were having audit meetings. We were having community development meetings. We were having all kinds of meeting, <laughs> meetings. That now we have everything concentrated in committee of the whole. Yeah, council was the only one that was really set. The rest were whatever it's going to be called. Yeah, the last final approval. Yeah. Since the last Monday meeting, there's a little bit of rigmarole. Was there a little bit of rigmarole that one? Yeah. <laughs> Don't remember that at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> that was our last meeting, right? Yeah. yeah. So the next meetings are in November, October 15. Council. Uh, see you in the morning. See you in the But he's wondering where the council meeting is going to be. November 6th, November 5th is a Thursday, and that's when we're going to add up. Well, that could depend on how many, uh, re how many um, recounts are going to be requested, too, after this. Well, we'll have it anyway. It didn't happen last Jeez. time. Well, of course, we've been here all night trying to discuss this. Like I, like I <laughs> said earlier, I think that the, our next council meeting will, is to be determined. Determined, yeah. Yeah, because we'll set, we're not going to set any schedule for that. I just recall that it was... In, that's just my opinion, um, folks. <laughs> well, the swearing in one for our first one in the term was delayed because Dwayne asked for a recount for myself and then we kept getting mm -hmm. delayed as to yeah, when the it's done. So. 
Okay, so we're good with committee. Of, we will be meeting at uh, committee of the whole, and uh, you know we can ha keep in mind uh, the, when we're making recommendations the fact that we may not all be here to approve them. So someone else will have the duties if if that if that occurs. These two can make all the recommendations. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so is is there in, in here? I am. <laughs> I believe a motion for I'll adjournment is in order. Before adjournment, I can finish oh. my. Uh, Emily, uh, I have all those questions, the first meeting on the COW. If any media wants it, all the questions that were asked to the staff and the council, councillors and everything, and there was only one question that uh, there was a yes, and I think it was. Ordering the recovery about the housing commission, right? I remember right that you were contacted by the yeah, Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, motion for adjournment. So moved we'll, by we'll Councilor McLennan. I said it first. Second by Deputy okay. Warren. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Second. Just because you're fine. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Contrary minded. We are adjourned.